Sir, now we move on to Mr. Kuzner. Five minutes, sir. Thanks very much, uh, Minister, for being here and the officials. Uh, Minister, you're quite confident that uh, uh, in 80% of the cases, people are receiving EI benefits um, within 28 days. Eligible claimants, yes. I, I think what you're looking at is notice of payment. Is that what you're referring to, notice of payment? No, if, you want, if you want to add to that, uh, they, Louise. They are put in pay, so they are paid within 28 days. That's the term they, from the date of their application, and put into pay, so they're receiving funds. So they're receiving funds in 28 days. Yeah, we're okay. actually a little bit over 80 percent now. How many are being turned back? Recent, recent statistics show that uh, of the 2.8 million claims that you would have processed last year, 700,000 would have gone beyond the 28 days. Is that fact? Is that a fact? I don't have the exact number as to how many would have gone beyond that. But a quarter, a quarter of the claims would have gone past 28 days, and on average, those on, and on average, those people are waiting seven weeks. Yeah. So the, are, are you are, are you pleased so, with that figure? So the speed of pay uh, in the past has not been as good. That is true, but we are now definitively over 80 percent. So the That's on the ones that are being paid. That, so you, you've yeah. changed the rules. You've changed the, the game here, okay? You know, because let's talk about those that are waiting seven weeks, that, that in 28 days they get a notice saying that they will not be paid. And it's tough to put groceries in the fridge with a notice that says, no, you're not going to get paid. So are you comfortable with that fact? that uh, over 700,000 Canadians that apply for EI benefits are going past, they're averaging seven weeks before they receive payment. I, I can't confirm that number right now, but I could get back to you as to whether that's correct or not. And, and beyond that, after, so the, the, the stress level in these kitchens, the stress level in, with these Canadians now, then they, call, then they phone the call centre. And, you know, with the call centre, be, before your government cut 600 jobs, closed 100 EI processing centers, which uh, the, the minister quoted will make it faster, more efficient, and more effective service, uh, you were dealing with um, uh, the, the call center calls. The service level was 95% of the calls were being answered in three minutes. Uh, you, you weren't hitting that number, so you cut it down to 80% of the calls being answered in three minutes. Weren't hitting that. You cut it down last year, 80% of the calls were being answered in 10 minutes. I'm starting to pick up a bit of a trend here. Are you not yourself, Minister? Because if, if you're not hitting the numbers, you're changing the rules and you're changing, you're lowering the standards. Or is that acceptable to you? So, I mean, Service Canada definitively tries to meet the service standards that are set out there, and we try and do that in the most efficient and effective way possible. By lowering the standards? Is that acceptable, Minister? Obviously, by you're meeting, not aware of that, but you are now. By, um, by meeting the standards. But we, we see the pattern of lowering the standards. And, these, and, Minister, you have to know, these are our most vulnerable. These are our most vulnerable Canadians that are without work now, and they need that support. So, uh, you know, now that you're aware, I, I would just hope that you'd be seized with this issue and make sure that we put the resources in there that, that, that have to, uh, that, that we need. Just, uh, I've got a couple minutes left. Uh, just Mr. going Chairman, back to uh, uh, a question Chairman, uh, uh, sorry, by sorry my interrupt. Just, uh, but sorry, yes. We, we, we didn't get a chance to respond to the yes, comments. Please, yes, please, yeah. Okay, please yeah. respond, yeah. So, Mr. Chair, you, you can rest assured that when an individual calls with a dire needs uh, issue, that we address that right away. The that, that's when they get through, because 54% of the time they don't get through. The call is dropped. They can go into a Service Canada Centre as well. There's, there's means of getting in touch with us. When we get uh, directly, they can come to me. If they, if they address, if there's a dire yeah. needs case, we well, address I'll make that. sure we'll, we let that <laughs> single mum from New Waterford know that, that that's she can good. pop by it's your no office. Problem. I get a lot. Uh, that's great. Uh, but uh, 35 seconds. Thanks very much. Just the youth employment strategy. Uh, in 2005-06, uh, the youth employment strategy served 113,000 uh, youth. 
that's uh, uh, currently the uh, most recent stats said say that uh, last year uh, it was 54,000. So a loss of 50,000 young people are having access to uh, uh, to that program. Um, and then and then we're projecting as uh, as was mentioned earlier, we're projecting another uh, 20 million dollar cut in that program. So where is the help for you know wh wh where where's where are the young Canadians getting the support from that program? Well, um, as I think I mentioned at my outs at the outset, uh, uh, there are a variety of ways we help young people get into jobs. Training is uh, foremost among them. Um, I, I want to emphasize the importance of the uh, Canada Apprenticeship Grant. Uh, for too long, our policy, so a suite of policies, uh, ignored training for the trades. That grant has now gone to over 300,000 uh, young people, 500,000 grants to 300,000 young people to help them go and get certified and get their journeyman or journeywoman tickets and work in high demand jobs. Uh, we're also targeting uh, resources to help uh, young people transition from one career to another. For example, uh, there are 9,000 working age veterans uh, who are released from the military every year. Uh, we want to ensure that they, that they many of them young, um, get recognized by uh, the system for the skills that they accumulated while they were in the forces so that they can are, are automatically qualified to work in uh, high demand jobs. I was just at uh, BCIT at uh, Polytechnic in British Columbia uh, last week uh, where uh, they have a, sp a program specifically designed to help young hundreds of young veterans get uh, credit, uh, credit, course credit for uh, many of the skills that they built while they were in the forces so that they can then um, convert those skills into the civilian marketplace. Uh, and uh, we announced uh, uh, funding for BCIT to expand this program to seven other sites across the country so that it will be available to any veteran who ultimately wants it. So th that's just one example of how we're using training to bridge and build skills uh, for uh, in-demand jobs. Thank you, Minister. Thanks.